What up guys and girls, it's uh, Jason here from Custom Cans and today I have the Bear Dynamic DT252 which is basically like half a DT250 it's got, so it's the one ear version um, I'm going to be customising these, making a custom colour for someone in the in the industry but uh, before that I need to pull them apart so I can paint them so it's a good excuse to have a look inside and see what they're all about what have we got in here? The original cable. Okay, so let's have a butcher's head pad. It's a bit like one of those Ziploc bags. It's got two little hooks that hook together. It's nice, nice and light. These nice and light. So I can imagine if you're using these, because obviously these are used by studio technicians and stuff, and they're used all day. So having a nice lightweight body really helps. And uh, in case you're wondering, it's one of those things where if you if you need to hear what's going on on set, but you also want to be hear like notes from the director or whatever, that's that's why you've got a one-eared version because there's often situations where you just need to hear what's going on and hear other people talking to you. You don't want to be messing around. Now, some some headphones have got like a swivel ear cup, like the HD25, so you can listen one-eared or with both ear. This is a dedicated single ear jobby. You can get them with a microphone as well for talk talk back, but um, this one's just just with the ear cup, right? So that's the head pad removed, and yeah, it's a weird. It's very similar to the Bear Dynamic Custom One head pad, but it does feel a bit, bit different. It doesn't have quite as much padding in it. Okay, what have we got under here? So under here, so you've got the you've got a plastic cover on the headband, and then a spring steel section underneath, which gives the gives the springiness. That's the clicking mechanism feels quite nice. Let's get this open. You can tell these are like an old school one because they're using Phillips screws. A lot of the the modern bear dynamics they've gone to sort of T6 and T10 screws. These ones have still got Phillips. Let's undo the hinges. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the screws back in the holes. Ooh. So I don't lose them. Okay, so those are just pretty simple parts. Um, PA6 nylon, so pretty durable. Got the serial number on there, DT252. And this is the little pad that goes above your ear. How does the clicking work then? Huh. Oh yeah, so the clicking mechanism, you basically just got some ridges uh, indented in here. And on the end of the headband, you've got a little spring clicky thing. I thought it felt like a metal clicker. Yeah, it's pretty pretty simple. I think that's the that's the good thing about you know this professional stuff that's going to last forever. Keep it simple and chunky. You know, don't overcomplicate things, and it'll make them much more easy to repair and make them last longer generally. All right, so we'll just take the other side off. There we go. So that's the. It's just like a headband cover. I think it's just to, just to fill out the the bit on top. It doesn't really do a lot. Just makes the pad look a little bit squidgy. I suppose um, where you've got the ones with two ear caps, this this is probably where you'd route the cables through there. So that that that's probably why that's there. Just somewhere to give you to route your cables. So the headband, yeah, just a simple piece of spring steel. That's pretty straightforward. Right, put those screws back in. Oh, I've lost the screw already. Oh. Come on, Jason. Oh, it's already in the hole. Okay, so those bits, easy to replace. This bit, does this come apart anymore? Mm. There you go, so you've got just a, that's just held on with sticky tape. So you can replace that bit when it gets a bit funky. Um, let's take that off. Come on. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Ah, so that's got that's got some quite chunky metal inside it as well. So that's um, that's nice and strong. Yeah. So it's plastic. Overmolded 
that's PA6 nylon again, over moulded on some metal to give it some extra rigidity, which is quite important because that's quite fat already. So they really didn't want that to break. And again, you've got, got a little bit on here. This again is made of PA6 nylon. I do really like the, uh, the professional gear. You know, it all comes apart really nicely so it can be serviced. It's all good. Right, so we just remove the pad in the stand away, finger underneath, uh, there's the pad. And you can see you've got holes on the bottom here. It'll be all part of the tuning of the sound. It's something bad and I do quite a lot. There'll um, different numbers of holes underneath to, to tune the sound. Uh, underneath we've got a felt, uh, another sort of foam disc which is covering the driver itself. Is this going to unclip? Oh, there we go. Hmm, pretty easy. Okay. So this side you've got a bit of a twist on it so it can conform to your head. Let's get that off. the same so you can see under here to, to do the twist you've got a triangular section in here so that, that can rock from side to side on there and it kind of limits the limits the motion again in here if this was the two-sided one you've got cable routing through here so you can see that channel there where the cable would go through to the other ear cup if you had a two ear cup one like the 250 So this is the actual driver capsule. Mm. All right, so that's just kind of popped in to little holes there. I uh, don't know if you've seen these before. They've got a mad sort of seven pin connector on them. And you can buy this connector from Bear Dynamic and then make your own cables. They sell a bare ended one. And the reason it's got so many pins is because they make these with microphones and all kinds of different stuff. So some of the cables need extra extra pins for those. But that's a that's a pretty serious connector, isn't it? Look at that. And what's nice as well is once you've plugged it in, you can then screw it in as well so you can't accidentally unplug it. Oh, that makes a real satisfying twang when you remove it. Oh yeah, there you go. So it comes with a long screw there so you can screw the cable in. Uh, you know, just professional gear. There's, there's certain times when this headphones can be mission critical. You might be doing something that's cost thousands of pounds to set up and you absolutely cannot miss a prompt or something like that. So screwing the cable in, you know, so it can't be pulled out if you step on it, can, can you know, it can make the difference between ruining a a thousand pound set you know several thousand pound setup or something like that um, yeah things you've got to worry about when you're making films okay so just remove the two screws from the driver I'm thinking this will probably there you go so that's the actual driver itself so you can see the magnet in there it's very similar to the DT990, but the rest of the driver is quite different. I'm just going to warm up the soldering iron and remove that. So in here, you can see the main board, which comes off the socket. And again, everything is very chunky in here. Um, these are designed to be kind of modified to work with different equipment, because you might have some very odd equipment that takes a strange connection. That's why they sell the, the bare cables for you to do. But yeah, so it's all designed to be pretty easy to solder. So you've got big solder pads, that kind of stuff. So you can see, look at those. You could solder onto those quite easily. Yeah, just so this is where the microphone would come through. If you're doing a microphone, these pins go out to the other ear cup if you had a two ear cup one. But uh, if you needed to modify this in some way, you've got nice big chunky points inside here. Which you can which you can solder to quite easily, and they're not going to tear off the circuit board and that kind of stuff. It's extra, extra chunky and durable. Right. Okay, let's 
just remove the driver from this. There we go. So looking at the actual driver, you've got a pen mark there, which is next to the negative one, which is a, a classic biodynamic thing to do. Um, in here, you've got a bit of bit of felt all the way around the outside, which will be to absorb some of the some of the sound kind of rolling over the edge there and absorb some of the sound bouncing around inside. Uh, tissue paper on the back, which again will be due to tuning. But yeah, you'll be able to buy all of these parts separately from Bear Dynamic to to repair them if you should break them. So that's uh, that's what's inside a pair of those. Um, I've got to now take these off and prep them and paint them and then we'll put them back together at some point. So I'll do another video of the prep and paint and rebuild. But uh, there you go. If you've got any questions, stick them in the thingy bob. And uh, yeah, I'm going to crack on with this now. Yeah, but yeah, so it, does, it is a quite a different driver from the DT770s and DT990s. Magnet's the same, rest of it's different. So yeah, it'll definitely have different, different tuning and stuff. Uh, cool. Awesome. All right, I'm going to crack on.